Uh, so I'm here to speak to you about equal marriage and why it matters to say yes. Um, I guess you could say that it's a bit biased because these are all reasons why it matters to me why we should say yes. And I'm kind of going to speak about my personal experiences and my thoughts on the matter and kind of about what's happening at the moment in our political landscape. So marriage equality is a personal and a political issue, issue for many people because it involves daily struggles and aspirations for people. Um, it's about letting people keep their fairy tale dream of falling head over heels in love with someone, falling madly in love, and like them being able to marry them. And as Beyonce put it, it's about being able to like it and put a ring on it. <laughs> and as you can see, I've got a, a bit of a slideshow from some of the rallies that I've attended, so just for some prettiness. So the first time I ever heard about same-sex marriage, I was actually about five years old. Um, it was in my first year of schooling, it was after recess, we were all lining up in two straight lines to go back to class, and we mostly ended up in same-sex couplings. And one of the boys said to us that he heard in another country that it was okay for boys to marry boys and girls to marry girls. And our response to this is that we just thought this was awesome. We thought this was the best news ever, because essentially that meant that we could marry a best friend who liked all the same stuff as us, <laughs> we could play Barbies, share clothes, share secrets for the rest of our life, and then everything would be awesome. I, I'm not quite sure why this memory has really stuck with me. Maybe it's kind of defined what I believe in a way. But it kind of struck a chord with me because it made me realise that no child is ever born homophobic. And looking at the lessons that we're taught in primary school, I think we can learn a lot. Love is good, hate is bad, and we should share with each other. Share your toys, share your friends. And that we should have empathy for other people. We should imagine what it's like to be in other people's shoes. And I think it's important to maybe revisit this. I think this also shows that this is not an academic debate. This is something that a child of five years old can understand. That two people love each other, and they just want to show everyone and to get married. So thinking about equality itself, equality includes everyone. And it seems that the concept of equality is something that some people have a problem with grasping. Equality in marriage is evidently important. Because if we look to the past, in terms of sexism, we often take the vow of a wife obeying the husband out because they want to see each other as equals. And also in terms of racism, as we let people not to have separate but equal marriages, as we saw as important to appreciate interracial relationships. Two of the most important issues within the LGBTIQ, or is commonly referred to as queer, which I will do for the rest of this talk to say the acronym, is pride and prejudice. And I don't mean the Jane Austen novel. So pride, it's something that everyone should have. The freedom to be proud of who they are and not to be fearful of that. Despite your race, age, sex, gender, weight, income, or anything else. And prejudice. Prejudice is something that affects all of us. But if you want a reminder that homophobia is well alive and kicking, all you really need to do is log onto YouTube and look at the horrendous comments that people post to each other calling each other a fag or gay. So this is relevant for everyone. And as a nation, if we want to do things that we're proud of, we really need to be excellent to each other and fight for the rights of others, even if we don't see any personal gain in this. And if you do this, maybe you even get invited to a few weddings. So even the language around this debate is evolving. If we think about the term gay, it used to be used as a term to describe someone that's happy or gleeful. And then it turned into a way of describing someone who's homosexual. And now we kind of see it as an insult, as a put down. People say, oh, that's so gay. And inherently by saying that, you're saying that gay people are crap. Also the language around marriage equality, the fact that it's gone from gay marriage, this alienated thing, to same-sex marriage, as we realize that it isn't just people who are gay that want this, to equal marriage, as we acknowledge that there is an inequality here. And the issues around marriage itself has evolved. Sex used to be something that only married people did. Um, sorry to break it to you, but just the condom sales itself tends to show that that isn't so. Um, human beings, we're very able to adapt to change. Sometimes we're really into embracing change. I.e., when the new iPod um, came out, or when the new iPad came out, we were all very much rushing to adapt to that change. Marriage is a choice. And regardless of your sexual orientation, not everybody subscribes to this. A prime example of this could be our Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. She goes against what seems to be the cultural norms. She's atheist, unmarried, no children, and she's been in a de facto relationship, te technically living in sin. 
It's strange to see someone who's so nostalgic for the past to keep up tradition when previously in the past you did not have the right to vote or even lead our country. And the amended marriage act isn't all that traditional either because it's only a whopping seven years ancient where they changed it to the union of a man and a woman to the exclusion of all others. Being a minority isn't a choice and I doubt it's something that anyone would ever choose because given the way that you're treated and overlooked. Being born gay or queer isn't as much as a choice as who your parents are and what colour skin you have. Discriminating against someone's orientation or identity is as petty as discriminating someone based on the colour of their hair. It's something that's part of them and they can't change. Homophobia will always be far more of a choice than being queer ever will. And some people will argue that there's this gay agenda, that gay people are out to just ruin marriage and all of that. I doubt there is one, but if there would be, I doubt it would be much different to anyone else's. The gay agenda probably goes, get treated equally, marry who you like, feed the cat by book. <laughs> Legalising equal marriage is also not going to inspire straight kids to be gay in the same way that straight marriage has not inspired gay kids to be straight. And if you think ma uh, ma this same-sex marriage cheapens the institution or that someone else's marriage can cheapen someone else's, perhaps we should question Kim Kardashian, who recently made $72 from her wedding to only to divorce 42 late days later. Or maybe even Britney Spears, who got married just for fun for 24 hours. Look, I'm just putting it out there. If gay people get married, it might even strengthen the family unit, as these are people that will have children for a better reason than the condom broke. On a serious note, marriage is a clearly important social institution that carries deep meaning for both the homos and the heteros. But the current marriage act, as it stands today, actually empowers homophobia. It holds marriage as an exclusive hetero privilege. Exclusion is not protecting marriage, it's reinforcing hate. To state the obvious, if you don't like gay marriage, don't get gay married. It's very simple. And to keep it real, I'm, no under, I'm not under any illusions that passing equal marriage will instantly stop all homophobia. But it's a really important step, as it will become a cultural norm and then same-sex couples will start to be embraced, the same as couples and families are. So, on being an activist, when you first start up, it can be kind of hard, because there's kind of this gap of knowledge between previous politics, how it works, how to make change effectively, people's egos, what they want you to do, what you want to do. But if you believe in something, and you really believe in it, I think it's really important to keep at it. Keep your interests, keep your curiosity, question what makes you angry, and explore that. Uh, one of the things that I did when I first decided to become an activist was to start attending rallies, where I could be present, be amongst it all, network with people that were like-minded. And then from this, I started blogging and reading more about it, and I started taking photos and publishing them, and recently they've been used as promotional materials. So in a way, I feel like I'm helping to the movement just by being present. But one of the most tiring and frustrating things about being an activist is that you get asked stupid questions, and you hear a lot of stupid comments, and it becomes really hard to ignore the tiresome subtleties when you realise what people are saying. Uh, for example, a very commonly used phrase in this argument is, think of the children. Um, now being a young person, and this being a TEDx youth event, uh, I think this is a myth worth kind of debunking. So if we're thinking of the children, uh, I'll take it upon myself to think of all the children, which also takes into the queer children. Now, suicide is actually the biggest killer of our young people in Australia. One in four people will experience a mental illness. But if you're queer, the rate of your suicide is likely to go up to 14 times more than that of a straight person. High school is currently one of the most unsafe places to be if you're queer. It's awkward and uncomfortable because generally when you're going to high school you become, become a bit more into your sexuality. You're checking out guys, you're checking out girls, you're trying to figure out who you are, you get special feelings in your pants. It's all a bit awkward, especially if there's blatant bullying going on around you. It's all very well and inspiring to say it gets better, but for the time being it really sucks. And it's in a very real way that you can't ignore and this issue really needs attention. So, what can we do? So, some of the most important ways to respond to homophobia, when you see it, when you hear it, when you read it on Facebook, is that you need to acknowledge it. You need to call people out on it. You don't be silent. As the saying goes, bad things happen when good people do nothing. You need to challenge their opinion, and but not the person themselves. Also, being an ally is really important. You don't necessarily need to be gay or queer to be an ally. You can be straight, but not narrow-minded. 
Make yourself known as an ally and people will soon start to flock to you because they'll see you as a safe person. From putting myself out there as an advocate, people have approached me with their problems and ideas. From here you can gain networks and start to do stuff, whether it be to host a Wear It Purple Day fundraiser at your school, start a Gay Straight Alliance. Talk to people on Facebook, post a status, post videos, make videos, just start doing something, it's all important. And the thing about coming out, whether it being queer yourself or just as an ally, it's something that people don't realise is just a continuous thing. There's no one time that you can sit down, all your friends, all your family, loved ones, future roommates, housemates, workmates, all of that, and just let them know for the sake of letting them know. Because once you step out of the closet, there is always another step, and another step, and another step. So the first time I came out with high visibility as someone who was an advocate for this was last year. I was featured on the front page of the local newspaper, The Murray Pioneer, in a buzz story about the latest debate on same-sex marriage. Now, I live in a small rural town, most people know everyone, and there's kind of the stereotype that we're kind of rednecked and that we're not very accepting of difference. And so, I was a little bit scared about this. Initially, the responses that I received to this was people, instead of focusing on the issue itself, was questioning my sexuality. This was kind of annoying because I didn't think that it was relevant nor the point of this article. The fact that we were living in a small community, it also affected my family because they started receiving comments too. A man approached my dad in the pub and said to him, is that your daughter in the front paper today? He responded with yes. And there was kind of this awkward pause. Um, and then I was like, kind of gave him a strange look and went, ah, oh, good one. And just assumed that he was joking and kind of jogged on. And then a bit later, another man approached him and asked him the same question. Is that your daughter? And he said, yes. And then the man hugged him and said, give that to her. So I think for me that hug made it all kind of worth it. So the good news I think is that I think today's youth, us kids, we're all pretty savvy, which is handy because given the time frame that we kind of need to act on in the current political landscape, it seems that this fight may end up being our fight. I fear that this may not happen as soon as I want to due to the conscience woes that's currently happening. But I also fear that people are kind of just assuming that it's going to happen because it's inevitable. It's the right thing to happen, so it will. The important thing is that we need to keep the pressure on. We need to contact our local members of parliament to tell them that we care. We need to talk to our loved ones and families, tell them that we care, talk to our schools, talk to our workplaces. This is something that we really need to push. Because, in, to kind of conclude this all nicely, in between this world that pushes and pulls, we do all have similarities with wants, desires, needs, secrets, hopes and dreams. Life is messy, it's complicated, and it's a beautiful struggle. And it's, it's really quite hurtful to live with a parameter around your heart. And it's really naive to assume that people are bad because they're different to you, or they live differently to you. Regardless of what sex you're attracted to, I don't think who you love, who you fall in love with is ever a choice. Denying someone the same rights as you and the majority, even though it makes no impact on you, positive or negative, really does more harm than good. And going back to the story from my primary school, from my five-year-old self, 15 years later, I still think everyone should be able to marry their best friend. Thank you for listening to me.